And anisotropy. What is it? Why do we manage it? And what are the realistic specs? Anisotropy in glass, it can best be described as leopard spotting we see on glass, whether in our car, our home, or in storefronts. So what the heck is it? Why do you see it on glass in the first place? Well, unlike how real leopards are made, these sorts of visual spots on glass are an outcome of the heat treatment process to toughen glass and make it safety glass. The process of heating and quickly quenching the glass or rapidly cooling it introduces unbalanced stresses in the glass. You can think of these stresses as slightly different densities. So the same thing happens when you blow on your tea or coffee. Your breath is the quench and the coffee is the glass compressing under the force. First, we need polarized light, very important that clean wave oscillating on a single plane. Polarized light is way more common than you might think. We can polarize light in a variety of ways as well. Polarized sunglasses, sunlight bouncing off of reflective surfaces like water or floor, or a specialized viewing angle called the Brewster angle. Two, we need birefringent or birefractive material for the polarized light to pass through. Birefringent materials are those that have broken symmetry and can split the incoming wave of polarized light into two at 90 degree offsets. Well, as we established, heat-treated glass with varying densities is not exactly symmetrical, so heat-treated glass will be birefringent. The light wave gets split, and now we have two waves traveling on two axes. Actually, it's more like this. We have two waves. Wait, this is so hard to do that. See, it go that try to do that. It's really actually hard. This alone won't cause leopard spotting. That's the third thing, the phase difference. When you change the densities of glass, you affect the speed of light as it passes through those regions of different densities. Yes, the speed of light does change through different materials. This change in the speed of light for each ray, both the original or ordinary ray and the newly formed extraordinary ray, causes each ray exiting the material to be slightly out of phase. And so you finally get that telltale sign of leopard spotting, literally seeing the slight shift in phases that cause slightly different coloration. So you might think, ah, just be careful tempering and you should be able to minimize stress and the resulting densities. Easier said than done, my friend. We at Ignora use the modern ASTM C1901 standard for the measurement of anisotropy. Sounds really complicated, but it's not. Ignora was a co-chair with Louis Moreau for the standard formation. So now we can tell you just how out of phase those sneaky light rays are. And let me tell you, they can get adventurous. But for you or everyone buying big glass, get with your fabricator and demand to see those phase changes or just work with one that can measure for this sort of thing and build an agreed upon value you're willing to live with. And then go live your life. Live it up, don't worry about it. C'est la vie. Onward ho, I did write that in there.